Uh, good morning, friends. It's my pleasure to welcome you all to this online session on Google Form, Certify EM, and other add-ons for conducting online webinars, classes, and FDPs. At the outset, let me take this opportunity to thank the organizers for having given me this wonderful opportunity of meeting you all online. So dear friends, we are in the lockdown period and uh, during this particular period of time, we are happy to meet each other online to share our knowledge, to exchange our ideas. In today's presentation, I would like to cover the following aspects. I would like to give a small theoretical background of a Google form, how to create a Google form, how to design a Google form, how to administer a Google form, actually what is add-on and what about the Google form add-ons. Now how can we use certify EM add-on? Now how can we use a form notification add-on? And how can we analyze the responses that we have received from the respondents? So this is what I'm going to cover in this uh, particular session. And uh, dear friends, whether uh, irrespective of the department, irrespective of the designation, we are all taking part in a lot of activities during this lockdown period. Maybe we participate in webinars, maybe one day webinars, two day webinars, or sometimes we take part in the webinar series. So there are people who conduct uh, six days, seven days, one week, two week series of seminars. So we take part in those webinar series, or we take part in one day faculty development programs, or two days, or five days, or seven days, 10 days or even 14 days faculty development programs you're attending. And sometimes we attend even online quizzes, e-quizzes, which is being organized by very many institutions. And sometimes we take part in various online debates, discussions, deliberations, conclaves, meets, wherein we meet the people of the same feather, the experts, those who are working in the same field of your interest, to argue, to compare, to exchange, and to enrich our knowledge. Not only that, not only we take part in various programs, we also organize, we also conduct a lot of programs online, mm -hmm. either for all the faculty members, or for the faculty members of our own college, or for the entire students and scholars community, or for the students and the research scholars of your own particular institution. So what kind of programs we organize? Sometimes we organize live webinars and we are making use of such online meeting tools like Zoom, Cisco WebEx, GoToMeeting, Google Meet, even Microsoft Teams. So these are all the platforms we are using to deliver the content live. And sometimes when you feel that there, that arises some kind of technical issues and the participants will not be comfortable enough to be online, to get all the content, we contain offline content delivery systems. It's something like we conduct uh, our recorded webinars in Google Classroom or in Moodle Learning Management System or uh, through YouTube or through some institutional websites. So both live and recorded, recorded webinars are being organized. And we organize and conduct e-quizzes and online quizzes. We conduct some short-term courses and uh, we even organize some faculty development programs and uh, some faculty members even they organize uh, one week or 10 days or uh, some kind of student internship program, student development programs or add-on courses. So either you take part in a good number of activities, academic activities, or we organize a good number of events. Fine. So when you are planning to conduct an event, any kind of event for that matter, so basically you need the following components. So you need to have a title and session topics and you should decide on which platform you're going to organize your program, either Zoom or Cisco or YouTube or Google Meet or Google Classroom. So in which platform you're planning to conduct your program. Then you should find out suitable resource persons to handle the session. So these three are the very, very essential things. Apart from these three essential things, there are uh, four more important things. See, whenever you conduct a program, see, we used to send by post, 
the registration form, all the forms, everything we use and we post. But in this particular lockdown period, we have started using lot of online forms to register for a program. We have sent the registration forms. Once the program is over, we need to collect the feedback from them. Again, we have to make use of some online feedback form. And maybe at the end of the webinar or a session or a development program, you need to conduct a small quiz and uh, that quiz will be conducted online. And once quiz is over, once the event or program is over, you need to give certificates to all the respondents. It's not be post online. So even the collection of registration form, collection of feedback form, conducting a quiz and distributing certificates. These are the four main components of any ongoing academic programs. In addition to the three, three topics which we had uh, discussed now. So we need some tools and devices to carry out these activities when you're planning to conduct any kind of online academic activities. Fine. So we have got a single tool with us called Google Forms. Google Forms is a free application. It is being provided by Google and that helps you to quick, quickly create and distribute a form to gather information. So when you want to distribute your forms, when you want to collect some information from the respondents, who are located at different parts of the country or different parts of this world, we can make use of this Google tool called the Google Forms. So Google Forms was developed in 2008 and uh, it is included in the Google Drive Office Suite along with Google Docs, Google Sheets and Google Slides. So you can make uh, use of Google Forms in alignment, in aligning with all these kinds of uh, Google Drive Office Suite also. Fine. So what does a Google Form do? Okay, what can it do? See. Google Form is an online data collection tool so that helps you to collect data online. See, if you're a teacher, you can use Google Form to either collect the registration form or to get the contact the quizzes. If you're a researcher, you, even you can use Google Form to collect data from primary data from all your uh, samples. Even a data collection can be done very easily using this Google Form. Not only that, Google Form can be used to collect survey responses and uh, to automatically mark multiple choice tests and quizzes. Okay, it's very, very easy to calculate uh, marks for the children, those who are taking part in online quizzes, very easily, individualized, you can check. Not only that, it is capable of branching question paths. See, what you can do is that you can divide your uh, question into three or four uh, sections, and uh, uh, you can plan your questionnaire in such a way that by answering a particular question, a child or participant may be directed to go to a different part of the questionnaire. That kind of things can be done. And uh, you can have a different kinds of questions in Google Form. Okay, whatever you can imagine, all kinds of questions are available in Google Form. And apart from that, it is a versatile tool, Google Form. Fine. So this is a small uh, theoretical background of a Google, Fo Google Form. Now, let's get to the practical aspect of how to create, design, and administer Google Forms. Okay, good. Uh, one minute. Let me open my another file. Okay. Yes. So in the second part of this presentation, let us uh, see practically how you can make use of Google form. So come to uh, Google type Google forms and uh, you will get a site like this Google form sign in. You click on Google form sign in and uh, you'll be asked to enter your Gmail username. Okay, and the password. Once you type username and password, you will come to the home screen of Google Form. So the home screen of Google Form will contain all these things. For example, you have a drop down menu here and uh, you have a new form, blank form. And there are some suggested templates for you. And here is a place where you can go and get a gallery of all the templates. Some additional menus are here and such options are available at the bottom and recently accessed forms are available here. It's a home screen of Google form. And once you go to a Google form, that particular form will have all the components. So it will have file name, top left leftmost, you can see the file name for the particular form you're creating. This is a visual style, it's a preview, form settings, share button, so additional options, question response selector, this particular option, and these are insert options, uh, the question options, 
required response toggle delete question copy question then first question form name and the question type so these are very very basic components of a form screen let us see them one by one thoroughly so once you enter your google form account using the normally used gmail username and password you will land here this is a blank form you get fine and in the blank form here you can see forms home if you click on this button forms home you will reach this particular place where as i showed you previously you can see you can start here you can click this plus button you can start a blank form and they are giving suggestions on few forms which you can use these are templates they have already given all the designs all the questions you can take the template you can make all the modifications additions deletions you can use it and here template gallery if you give a click on this all the templates will appear maybe a personal maybe education maybe work under many different categories they have given a lot of sample templates you can choose any one template if you want fine these are the very templates okay once once i have selected a sample called event registration okay you can see here there is a template called event registration i just click event registration template and you will get this screen by default they have added a picture as a header and they have given few information so what you can do is that we can go on to change all these information all these pictures all these designs according to our requirements fine for example you just see here what kind of questions are available in the template fine so many different kinds of questions are there okay and let us start with our things this is our form uh, a plain form you are starting with okay and see first of all you need to give the title see here it is given as untitled form our form does not have a name so just click that and type the name i just type national level short term course on moocs creation of e content and oers just below that there is a option to add form description where you can go and type a small description about the particular program for example let's type the, the program is organized by government first grade college bangalore so i have typed the form name and i have given a small description about the form fine so first concept is clear then comes if you come down the first thing what they say that questions it says untitled question that means the question is not typed you can go and type your question fine and these are the options option 1 option 2 option 3 you can add options one question and options and if you come to right side by default multiple choice question is given so by default google form lets you have multiple choice questions if you want you just give a click on this download arrow button you can go and choose from around 10 different types of question forms okay by default multiple choice is there and here this button is meant for creating a duplicate so you have created a question and you want to create same kind same style of two or three more questions you can click this and you can have as many questions as you want and this dustbin no this is meant for deleting a particular question if you click this that particular question will be deleted fine and here there is a required option on toggle is there either you can switch it on or you can switch it off if you are switching it on it means that this particular question is a must the respondents when they are answering the form they have to give they have to write answer for this question unless they give answer for this particular question they will not be permitted to submit the form so that kind of compulsion we can create in submitting an answer for a question fine and these three dots no is meant for more if you click that you will get some more options on the right side there is a toolbar this will help you to add many more items to your question which we will see one by one fine so i type the question name of the participant so when you type the name of the participant automatically the multiple choices disappear and short answer is appeared it means that when you write the name of the participant google form understands that the name should be a short answer maybe one line question so it, it has automatically converted from multiple choice to short answer so i type the name of the question so maybe for the registration form or feedback form we need to collect the name of the participant as first item so i type the name of the participant 
but automatically short answer has appeared fine good how many types of questions are there we have short answer we have paragraph we have multiple choice check boxes drop down file upload linear scale multiple choice grid check box grid date time so these are the different kinds of questions which we can add to your google form fine so here comes short answer i have chosen fine and uh, once you have typed uh, the question here there is an option to delete or as i told you to add all those things fine i just made it uh, compulsory i just moved the toggle using the mouse button now it is become dot so you see here it is not dot here but here you can see the required option has come it means that the participants have to answer this particular question fine that's about uh, then if you click more button you can see a uh, two options one is a description another is response validation see you have to click this three dots that is more button you will get two options description tells you to give a description about the question for example under the name of the participant you can give a description like that see please add your title mrs mr ms doctor you can add initial you have to write the full name so that kind of description you can give by clicking on description fine for example here i click description and type include your title and designation example dr k ramasamy this will appear as such in the certificate so this kind of hint how the participants have to fill that particular question so that information is provided in the description section that is fine good then comes response validation as i told you there are two options if you click this three dots button two options will appear if you click response validation you will get this particular screen okay there are four kinds of response validation number text length and a regular expression see response validate tells you how should be the answer given by the respondent whether the respondent whatever answer he gives whether that fulfills the conditions what you are going to finalize here see whatever guidelines i'm sorry whatever guidelines you give here that conditions are to be fulfilled by the answers given by the respondents for example i selected length as my validation criteria two kinds of sub points are there maximum character minimum character you can say that maximum name of the partition should be 70 words 70 alphabets or 80 characters or minimum 10 so that you can fix either minimum or maximum for example i selected maximum the third column i typed 60 and they give a error message more than 60 characters it means that i say that when the participants are writing their name the length of their name should be maximum of 60 characters so they cannot type more than 60 characters as answer for this particular question and if they type more than 60 characters then they will get a error message stating that more than 60 characters for example see i just uh, uh, go to top menu send option is uh, seen here and uh, here you can see customize option good and here you can see again send option and uh, here the small i it is a preview option that means when you are preparing a question maybe after preparing one or two questions if you want to check how this particular question will appear to the participants what you can do is i just give a click on preview where is preview top right most panel second item is preview on i button click okay then you have got a a wheel type icon that is known as settings good okay and again here three buttons are there see first button is meant for customizing your team second button for previewing third button is for settings fourth button send and fifth button three buttons are there there's a more if you click that you will get lot of options so these are the options available under top right most menu why i have told all these things that you give a click on preview that i button you will get the screen let us see see we have given some instructions to the participants on how to fill the name let us see now how that particular thing works for example you are sending this form to a particular respondent the respondent starts filling the form okay so when he is typing the name if it exceeds 60 characters 
then Google form will give an error message. What is error message? More than 60 characters. In this way, after preparing either all the questions or three or four questions, you can give a click on preview, that I button, and you can go and check how that particular question works. Okay, once you have checked, you can uh, uh, close that particular preview section. Okay, now let us come back to the question. Is it fine? I think it's clear. Now to get the next question. So one, the first question is ready. I had decided what is the kind of question. Fine. After typing the question, or after typing the information that I need to collect from the respondents, I had selected the kind of question and I had given a small description. If you need a small, a short description about that question, you can give it here. And then if you want to have any response validation, you can go and do response validation. And if you want to make that question as a must, you can select this particular toggle. So after doing these many things for a particular question, let me move on to the next question. How to go to and create new next question is very simple. Either you click this particular button, a folder, a folder button that will help you to get second question. Otherwise, come to right side, the plus button is there. You can click plus button that will help you to get a second question. In both the ways, you can go and add next question. So let me create next question. And uh, so name of the part, I just type the question. What are your interests? Okay, what is the next question? You are going to take part in this particular program. What do you, what are your interests? What is your expectations? But what do you expect from this particular course? For this, normally they may need more than one line of answering. So what I did, I had selected paragraph as my question type. So if it is a paragraph, then the respondents will be able to type a good number of one or two paragraphs as their answers. Okay, shall we check? Yes, where to go? You have to go to preview. Where are the preview buttons available? Top, right board. There is an I button. Click that, you will get the preview. If you get a preview, in the preview you can type and check. See, I just typed so many things. So these much of information can be placed if your question type is a paragraph question. So first we have seen a short answer question, your name. And secondly, we have seen a paragraph question where the participants can be asked and permitted to write either one or two or three paragraphs of answers for that particular question. Even that is permitted, fine. So we have seen two different kinds of questions, fine. And third question, how did I create? I either click this particular folder button or you click this plus button, you will get the third question. The third question, I want to ask them with the respondent who is registering for my program, whether he is a professor, associate professor, or assistant professor. So obviously, the respondent will belong to any one of these groups and not all the groups. That is why. I selected multiple choice as my question type. That means that out of three options, we are going to give it to the respondents. The respondents can select any one. So multiple choice. You type the question designation and choose multiple choice and you type all the options one by one. If you want the fourth one, click on add option and type the fourth option also. It is fine. And for example, for example, this is another question. I just uh, uh, create another question here i just duties i type the uh, hod purchase committee counseling in charge admission in charge exam in charge all those things here but here i had selected checkbox okay you can ask a question sir what is the difference between multiple choice question and checkbox questions see multiple choice questions are preceded by a circle checkbox questions are preceded by a square that is one difference and second difference in the case of multiple choice questions, the participants will be able to select only one answer. But in the case of check boxes, the participants will be permitted to choose more than one answer. So the same participant may be the HOD and he may be the admission in charge, he may be the exam in charge, he may be the counseling cell in charge. So one person, when he wants to choose more than one answer, you can set check box as your question type. Okay. Now let us go to the preview and check. So I came to preview. Designation C, I can set only one. It will accept only one answer because it is a multiple choice question. But here I can select more than one answer because I selected check box as my question type. So that's a basic difference between multiple choice questions and check part type questions. Fine. Good. Okay. Then I, I create a next question. I typed a long list of states, maybe around 20 states I typed. See, if you want to list all the 20 slides in a Google form, it will look very lengthy. 
So what you can do is that you can type all the states and you can choose drop down as a question type. If drop down is selected as a question type, then all the answers will not be visible. Only when they click it, all the states will be listed. They can select any one state from the list available. So I selected drop down as my question type. Now let me go to previous section. See, nothing is visible. Only it state, only choose is there. If the respondents click this downward arrow, then all the states will appear. Then they can click and choose any state which they belong to. Fine. See, I just click all the states come. I can select any one might like. Fine. And let me go next question. See, this is a linear scale question. So we, whenever you want to rate something, you want the participant to rate something. So how do you feel about this particular program? How skilled you are in computers? So you range your uh, skill, you, you rate your skill in the range of one to five. If you say you are one, it means that you are ignorant. Three means you're okay, you know something. Five means you're a genius in this particular computer operation. So in the range of one to five, normally one is allotted to the least scale and five is allotted to the highest level of skill. Okay. For example, here, how skilled you are in computer operations, I selected linear scale. That is one to five. One is ignorance. I don't know anything about computer operations. And five means I'm a genius. So respondents will, took, will choose any one number. One or two or three or four or five. We give only one and five. Remaining are to be scaled by them. So this is how we can frame a linear scale. Let me go to preview and check how this question will appear. So when respondents are trying to answer this particular question, it will look this way. Ignorant one. Genius 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. They can choose any one option. Is it fine? This is what linear scale is concerned. Fine. Next comes multiple choice grid type, both rows and columns. See, we want to have a multiple choice questions, but this time it is multiple choice grid. Previously, we had seen multiple choice questions where we have given few options to the respondents. The respondents have to select any one option. Here, here, what we are going to do is that we are going to have both rows and columns. In the rows, you are asking the question. For example, how was the program? What about the content of the program? What about the delivery? What about the communication? What about the interaction? So you have all your questions as rows. In the columns, you give a scaling. Excellent. Very good. Good. Fact. So this way you can have both rows and columns. Rows are meant for your content. Column is meant for ranking. It's a multiple choice grid. So in the preview, let us see how it looks like. Here, all the four options appear both uh, vertically and horizontally. For content, the respondent can choose only one answer. The delivery, only one answer. Communication, only one answer. And interaction, only one answer. That means in every row, in every row, only one answer can be selected, not both. That's what multiple choice grid type question is all about. Fine. Next comes checkbox grid type. This is another question I type. For example, what do you need? You see, you're going to join our course. What do you need? I want telephonic assistance. I want WhatsApp question answer session. I want the PPT. I want the videos. I want the study notes. First day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day. So I got two things. In the row, I type the questions. In the columns, I have given the dates. For example, first day, whether you want technical lessons in the first day, second day, third day, fourth day, whether you want to study notes, first day, second day, third day. So this way, more than one option can be selected by the respondent. So that is what checkbox grid type is. Let us see how it will look like in the preview section. See, telephone assistance, I want only on first day and third day. WhatsApp session, I want on the third day and fourth day. PPT, I want to have it on second and third day. Videos, I want all the days. So this way, more than one answer can be selected in every row. So that is why we have selected this kind of, which one? Checkbox grid question type is selected. Fine. I think that's the difference between multiple choice grid and the checkbox grid. In the multiple choice grid, for every single row, only one answer can be selected. But in the checkbox grid, you can see we can select more than one answer in every row. Fine. I think that is clear to you. And there's a difference between multiple choice grid and checkbox grid. You can see the difference. Let us move on to the next one. 
See, you want to insert a date as an answer. You want you expect the participants to give date as an answer. You can select date as a question type. Date of payment of registration fee. Okay, I want to know on which day the particular participant has pay, paid the registration fee. Here, once you type data payment of registration fee and click date as a question type, here automatically you can see something like month, day, year, and the option for calendar. So these things have come automatically. Okay. How this will look in the preview section? Just go to preview. So when somebody is answering here, mm slash dd slash y y y y a calendar is there. Click it, the calendar appears, the respondent can choose the date of his or her payment of registration fee. Fine. The same way, I create another question wherein I want the answer to be given in terms of hours, 7.30, 8.30, 2 hours, 3 hours. When I want such kind of answers, you can give the question, time or duration you can spare for your daily class. I had selected time as a question type. And here, you can see here, the time has already come. The yeah, clock is appearing here. Now let us see how this will appear in the preview section. You can see here, you can type the hours, you can type the minutes, you can choose AM or PM. So this is what a respondent gets when he is entering the particulars, when he is answering this particular question. Fine, okay. Now, the one more thing we'll see, there's a kind of file type called file upload. File upload. If you click this file upload as a question type, for example, I ask a question, upload your research activities. So how many research papers you published, uh, how many book chapters you contributed. You give your research list I want to see. So based on that, we'll provide you content in this course, for example. So when you want the participant to upload a file, you can select file upload. And when you select file upload, you can see here, let respondents upload files to drive, continue. You click on continue. You'll get another screen where you can set. That means what kind of files will be accepted, whether documents or spreadsheet, PDF, video, image, audio, drawing, presentation. So what kind of files can be submitted by the users? First option. Second option, maximum number of files. How many files a particular respondent can upload? Either one or five or 10. These are the maximum number of files. It can be two, it can be three. If you select one, only one. If you select five, the participant can submit either one or two or three or four or five, maximum five, fine. And third option is maximum file size. See, you are permitting the participants to submit the files. Files. You can decide what will be the maximum size of that particular file. Whether it is one MB, 10 MB, 100 MB, one GB, 10 GB, that also can fix. So if you choose file upload as a question type, you need to decide on these three aspects. File type, maximum number of files, and maximum file size. Fine. These three things ought to be taken care. Okay. Once this is over, just go to preview and check how it looks like. Upload your research activities. When arrow, upload arrow is there, add file is there. So participants, when they are trying to answer the question, they will click on add file. And there are three options. Either they can have files added from their local computer or from their drive or if they have previously selected and used any file, even that can be uploaded. For example, I have file in my computer, I want to add it. Click on upload, okay, and click on select files from your device. Click that and choose the file. I have selected one particular PDF file. I click on open. You can see here the file has come here. Then I click upload button and it gets uploaded. So once it's uploaded, you can see here in the form, the file which I had chosen to be uploaded has come here. Okay, that is how you can set file upload as a question type. Fine. And um, these are the different kinds of questions. I told you about a short answer, paragraph. I told you about multiple choice. I told you about grid type of uh, questions. Then I told you about uh, multiple choice grid, checkbox grid, and then date as a question, time as a question and uh, file upload as a question. So the very different kinds of questions which you can adapt for your Google Forms, fine. On the right side, there is a toolbar. Let us see what are they. These are toolbar items. Plus symbol is meant for adding questions. This right side arrow is meant for importing questions. 
capital T and tumal T is meant for adding title and description. This button is for adding images. This button is for adding videos. And this button is meant for adding sections. So let us see them one by one. As I told you, you can just click this plus button. If you press a button, a blank question will appear next. Okay, you can create, you can add a question by just clicking on add question. I just click add question. You can see here, question is blank. By default, multiple choice question is chosen. Here you can go and type the question. You can choose a kind of question. You can type the options. You can uh, make it a must or not. And you can uh, even uh, go for description or validation. So this way, by using this plus button, you can add a question. Fine. Okay. Next. Next one is import question. So this particular option is very useful. For example, you have created one particular form, maybe a couple of months. Or already Google form gives you a lot of templates. Every template has got a lot of questions. If you want to import some questions from the previously created templates, or you want to download some questions from the forms what you had already created, you can click on this import question. Once you click that, all the forms, whatever available in your Google Drive, all the forms will appear. For example, I want to download some questions from this particular uh, form. Okay, I select the file and then click select. Once you click select, what it does, it gives you a list of all the questions which are available in that particular form. See, all the questions are there. Let me select few questions. I selected two questions. Organization, what days will you attend? So import two questions. If you click on import two questions, both the questions will be incorporated, will be merged into your current question form, your current Google form. You see here, two questions are added here. One is organization. And second is what days will you attend? Using the second button, this way you can import the questions from other Google Forms also. Fine. Okay, good. And third one is adding title and the description. If you even click on this capital T and small t, you can add a description. For example, I asked three or four questions about a particular topic. Then the remaining questions will be about some other topic. So what I can do is that you can go and give a title, second section. The following section talks about your expectations from the short term course. Okay, you can have a different different sections, but they are all looking same. That means all the things will appear in a single form, in a single page. But before you start giving questions about the entire different topic, you can have a small option called a section. You can give a name and see second section. The following talks about your expectations from the short course. Okay, this is how it will look in the previous section. So. In the same question, you can have as many sections as you want by using this particular option. I think it's clear. Yes. So we have seen add question. We have seen import question. We have seen how to add a section. Fine. And fourth one is add image. You can add images. So image can be given as a question. Click on add image and you can add image from your file. You have an image in your system. You can add from the camera, from the URL, by photos, from Google Drive from Google image search, from all these areas, you can collect the pictures, no problem. Okay. For example, I clicked the Google image search. I typed the MOOCs and uh, all the pictures on MOOCs will appear on the screen. I selected one particular picture and I clicked insert. Once you click insert, you can see here that particular picture is incorporated. And here you can type the question MOOC. M-O-O-C. What is MOOC? What is the full form of MOOC? So that kind of questions can be given. Here you can give a small image. So this is how you can add image. Fine. And next comes add video. You can add videos also. One, two, three, four, five. Fifth button is meant for adding videos. So click on this particular button to add videos. Two options are available. Either if you are knowing the URL of YouTube videos, you can paste the URL. Or if you want to search in the YouTube, click on video search and type your keyword. I typed a keyword called MOOC. Many videos appear. I selected one particular video and then I clicked select. So you can see here that particular video has come as a question in my Google form. The video has come. You can type your background to MOOC. So the participants, those who are happening to read your form, they will read this particular, uh, they will see this particular video. 
just below the video you can ask few questions about this particular video even that is possible fine and second option is i told you you can add a url for example sir already i know a url if you know the url just paste the url here okay and then click on select even that video also has come once video has come you got options for aligning it either left align center align right align change remove so all these options are available when a particular video is included as a question fine so you can see now there are two videos i have incorporated two videos one by searching youtube and another is pasting the url both are permitted okay fine the last option is section add section see this is the place where you want to divide your questionnaire into three or four groups for example at the end of the program when you are collecting the feedback form what normally we do is that see feedback will be five to six questions so first section you have all the uh, feedback uh, aspects and you create a separate section called a section 2 and you include all the questions in the second part that means that your questionnaire is divided into your form is divided into two sections if you want you can have three sections personal section feedback section question section if you want four you can four you can have as many section as you want you can ask a question so already you told that tt is meant for adding a section and this is also adding section what is the difference between these two it's very simple friends tt is meant for creating a section within a question form the entire question form will look like a single page they will answer and they will go if you select our section your question will be split into three or four parts if your question is having three sections then they have to give answer first section then they have to click next they have to go to next second page then they have to go to third page so if you having three sections your question will be split into three pages okay fine that's a major difference fine you can see here when i clicked add section section 2 of 2 because i have only, i have got only two sections already i had only one section now by clicking this add section button i added the second section see in your title see video based assessment description watch the videos and answer the questions that follow so i have downloaded two videos no so just below the videos i include a section now it will look like two different compartments okay fine that's about uh, these uh, toolbars um, five different options available in the right hand toolbar fine fine you can ask the question sir where to go and change sir if you are looking in ms word something like that you go to file you click save or you press control s what about this particular google form see since you are working with google form online in the cloud system you need not go and save anything whatever you do it automatically saves the entire result this is here every change you make is automatically saved in drive last edit was seconds ago so each and every edit you do will be automatically saved you need not worry about saving your google form fine okay now now let us talk about the options available in the top right corner i told you first option is customizing theme something like a um, ink color palette that is for customizing okay and second one is uh, i a preview button third one is settings fourth one is send option and fifth one is more button we we'll let us see all the five options here click on this particular color palette you will get uh, uh, theme options header you can change theme color you can change background color you can change and font style you can change so these four things can be changed if you click on this customize theme option okay see for example uh, what is the um, heading we have we want to change the heading okay let us see how we can change the heading okay see click on this choose image under header there is a option called choose image click that you get lot of pictures under many different headings under themes you have work and school illustration birthday party kids wedding sports many options are there otherwise upload if you are having a photo or a picture in your computer you can upload or even the photos what you have already in google drive even that can be taken and uploaded okay for example i set a particular picture i went through i set this particular image i want this particular image to be the header for my google form after selecting by single click you select the form the image and then click insert you can see here my header form is changed okay my header is changed this way either you can go and add any header which is available or even you can upload 
a particular picture of your choice to be the header for this particular form. Okay. Then background color. I can change the background color. You can see here. Click on uh, theme color. You can choose any one color, and this will be changed accordingly based on the color selection. Here, the theme changes. Then background color. You can change the background color also. You see, I have changed the background color just by clicking this pink color button. No, this color. I have changed the entire background of my Google Form. So you can change the header. You can change the theme color. You can change the background. And apart from looking at font style also, only four styles are there. You can see here how the title looks like. Now let me click on this uh, font style. Click four options are available: basic, formal, playful, and decorative. Four options are there. Let me select playful. You can see how the font style is changed. Okay. So these are the four options which are available under customize theme button. Fine. Good. When you go to preview, this is how your font will look like. Okay. Good. Let me come to next one. Okay, and uh, uh, preview your scene. Second one is uh, uh, as I told you, this button. Second button is I button. If you click this particular button, the form will open. You can see how it will appear for the audience, for the participants. You can check. Okay. Then, then next one is we have settings button. Third button is settings, a wheel button. Click on settings. Three options are available under settings. One is general, then presentation, then quizzes. Under general, you got few options. I'll explain one by one. See, if you want to collect email address of the respondents, the form will automatically collect all the responses. So whenever a particular participant fills your form, his or he or email ID will be automatically collected and saved by Google Form. First option. And second option is response receipt. See, for example, a participant fills the feedback form. Here we can decide. After filling that particular form, whether a copy of the form should be sent to the mail ID of the participant or not, that you can decide. Okay. If you click on if respondent request it, then only when the respondent asks for it, the form will be mailed to him. If you click always, then the system will not expect the answer of the participant. Once the participant fills the form, automatically a copy of the form will be mailed to him. Fine. And secondly, requires sign in. If you check this box, limit to one response. One participant with one Gmail ID can submit this form only once. So, using same email ID, one person cannot submit more than one form. Fine. The last one, respondents can edit or see summary. That means, if you are checking this edit after submit, even after submitting the form. If the participant finds any mistake in that, he will be able to correct it. Okay, and see summary charts after submitting. If it is a question, the participant will be able to see all the summary. Fine. So these are three options available under general. Good. Now let me move on to presentation. If you click on presentation, okay, you can see three options. If you click show progress bar, it will show the progress. For example, you have twenty questions. The respondent is answering one by one. You can, he will be able to see the progress bar. Okay. Second is shuffle question order is very important one. See when you are conducting a class, quiz, something like that. If you click shuffle question order, the number of questions will be shuffled. Okay. The students will not get all the questions in the same order. Every student will get the questions in different different order because the questions will be shuffled. Okay. And third one shows link to submit another response. So if you are permitting the same respondent. To submit one more response, then you can give a click on this. Always leave it. Okay. And here confirmation message. You can type. Okay. You can type. You can customize it. I just type. We have received your registration. We will send the required information in time to your mail ID. This is a message. That means after submitting the registration form or feedback form, what message the participant should get from you. So that message you can decide and type over here under presentation. Fine. And third one is quizzes. Okay, if you move this toggle on off to make this form either as a quiz or not a quiz. See, if it is only a registration form, if it is only a feedback form, don't click and choose it. That will be a form. But if you are preparing a question, if you want to convert this Google form into a quiz form, then you can click this and make it dark so that this particular form will become a quiz. Okay. 
and if it is a quiz then they ask a question after submitting the answer whether the participant will be immediately see the answer or after the manual review so if you feel that you are conducting a mcq type answer question so as soon as they feel all answer they want to get the answers immediately fine no problem if you feel that after they submit the answers you have to go through them you have to value them and then they should see it. you can choose later after manual review fine and even if you can choose here after submitting their response whether the participants will be able to see the missed questions they will be able to see the correct answers they will be able to see the point values so if you choose these things after submitting the quiz form the participants will be able to see what are the questions i missed what are the correct answers for the questions and what are the point values each question carries so these things also the participant will be able to see so all these things are decided by you under settings under three different sub categories called general presentation and quizzes okay fine and the next button is send button you can see a big button send button the send button is used to find out and get a link see you created a form you have to get a link for this particular form that link will be sent to all your intended participants expected participants using that link the participants will be able to fill the particulars so you should get the link how to get the link click on send button you can see an option collect email addresses so whenever uh, respondents are submitting the form they will be collecting uh, email address automatically and send via email so if you click on send via email what you can do is that you can type the email addresses two addresses no you can type all the email addresses either you can type one or two or you can select long list of email addresses what are available in your uh, drive fine you can select if you select it this form will be sent to only those selected email addresses so this is possible okay and secondly if you click on this link hyperlink button you can see a long link has come https docs.google.com forms the long list i don't want a longer link i want a shorter one what i can do i can click on shorten link shorten url you click check this box if you check this box then you will get a small link a shortened url okay click on copy here and that will be copied and you can paste in the word or the email address you can send it to all your friends all your groups whatsapp groups fine so this is a link i copied for our uh, uh, session and thirdly we have got uh, um, embed html so if you click third option you can get a embedded html code so if you get embedded html code of your form this html code can be pasted in your college website or in your blog or it can be embedded to any online platform so if it is embedded then the respondent those who are visiting your site will be able to fill the form from the website itself when that is possible then comes right more side two options are available you can share your forms via facebook and twitter also click facebook you have to use a name and password you can send you these all these google link forms through facebook also fine and the finally we have come to the more button three vertical dots are there more click on more these many options are available so undo option is available make a copy see you are working with a particular google form you want to take a xerox a duplicate of same form you can click on make copy if you want delete the form click move to trash and if you want to print the form click print if you want to add collaborators click this button if you want to see add ands you can click this if you want to check preferences you can go for this particular option so these many options are available under more button fine let us see one or two so i just click the add collaborators that means i want to add few more people as collaborators to this particular form what i created so that even they will be able to see the form edit the form and they can also check the answers okay what i have to do is i have to add the people i have to add the email id of all the respondents and i have to give a link get link so this link should be given to all the editors so that even they will be jointly working with this particular google form with me so even collaboration is permitted fine then comes under more this something called add ons click add ons all the add ons will appear 
you can select any add-on you like and you can use it in your google form okay then comes preferences go to more select preferences here two options are there okay if you check this particular box collect email addresses whatever google forms you create all the forms universally without asking you google will collect the email addresses okay you are setting the preference the same way see you can now questions for questions make questions required if you click this box by default all the forms all the questions whatever prepared all the questions will become must questions all the questions and all the forms whatever you prepare here default quiz point value zero that means that by default you can have zero as the default point value for all the questions see if you select this particular option whatever forms you are going to create in your google form will have zero as the default quiz point value so here one or two things which can be universally applicable to all the forms whatever you are going to create in google form you can come and choose few reference preferences here fine yes now i have selected a link you copy the link and open any browser paste the url google form link and you can see the form what we have created fine good and before i complete this first part of the session i will tell you how you can create a question see so far i told you how to create different kind of questions now i'll tell you how to make a particular question to carry marks for example i typed a question what is the full form of oer i have set a multiple choice as my question type i typed four options okay now i have to do two things one is i have to tell the computer what is the mark to be awarded for this question and secondly i should tell what is the correct answer these two things are to be decided how to do that please click on answer key you have to click on answer key okay if you click on answer key this screen comes here you can type what is the mark you want to give to this particular question whether one or two or five you can type the point after then click on done click done okay clear now you can see here one mark is allotted good then again score is added no problem here see here answer key one point is added again click answer key and then you can select correct answer for example for my question first option is correct answer i click the first option you can see a green tick here then click on done okay now i have selected both uh, uh, the right answer and i have allotted the point for this particular question okay so dear friends this is the first part of my presentation and this is what we have seen so far how to open a google form what is the difference between blank form and templates how to add different kind of questions how to import questions from other forms how to add images and videos how to add separate sections how to customize your google forms in terms of header background color theme color and font style how to preview your form how to set things like presentation responses how to get links for your google form and how to delete add collaborators and set preferences and how to add point your question so this is what we have seen in the first part of this presentation and uh, i got one more video on uh, use of add-ons in google okay so let us see it in the second part of my video till then thank you so much for your patient listening